Hey, good morning and welcome to Wine Decoded's V16 Bathtub Shiraz Sessions. Uh, here we are again with the whole bunch of Shiraz. This one is the most advanced of the ferments at the moment. It's actually uh, already chewed up in the liquid close to half of the sugar. Uh, so the yeast have converted that sugar to alcohol and carbon dioxide. It's tracking along really nicely and it's smelling really good, but I wanted to show you where the whole bunches are for two reasons. One, I want to taste them. I want to see what they're like in comparison to some of these single little berries here and, and really get a gauge an idea of what's happening by doing this whole bunch ferment and how it's actually benefiting what we're doing. So let's dig in. We've got, if you remember from last time, some crushed fruit, just like this stuff. Uh, crushed and distemmed, uh, fruit at the bottom, then we've got a whole bunch in the middle, and some more crushed fruit on the top. So I'm going to dig in here and see if I can get out some whole bunch for you. Shouldn't be too far down, I can feel them now. And I can feel some stalks, so I'll pull out a big handful and see what we've got. And there we go. Okay, so here you can see the whole bunches. You can see a whole heap of the berries have uh, started to detach. And, uh, and come off, but we've uh, we've still got some quite intact uh, whole bunches there. So what I'm really keen to do is taste some of these berries, see what they're like. Tiny, tiny little bit of fizz in there. Not much at all. They're hardly fermented. Hardly any activity in these attached berries. By comparison, let's have a taste of some of these at the top. Much fizzier. Still very sweet. So, interesting to see that what we're getting is in those whole bunches, a, uh, a slowing of the, the ferment in those berries. I think what that's gonna mean is we're gonna actually get quite a progressive ferment where there'll be sugar available from the berries that were broken uh, during the, the crushing and distemming and transferring process into this fat. And that'll be chewed up by the yeast. The yeast will be looking for more sugar after that. And they'll, they'll then go onto some of these whole berries and really push into these. And then, finally then, the, uh, the whole bunches. So we're gonna have some choices to make and some of those choices will be when we press this, but also whether we decide to drain some liquid off this and actually give it a good foot stomp to start to break these up and release the juice at some point in time. The other consideration for us at the moment is that this ferment is actually tracking at about 27 degrees Celsius. A little bit of heat's actually quite good for ferments, we like that, uh, but we don't want it to go over top because it'll, it'll kill the yeast. So some good heat will help us blow off some of the really primary fruit characters and help us get a more complex and layered kind of, of, of wine. Too hot will cook it, kill the yeast and potentially stick the ferment. Uh, too cold and we'll end up with a real sort of fruit bomb. So we're just trying to balance that out on, uh, in Melbourne, <laughs> we've got weather at 40 degrees and, uh, and so on. So our cooling coil may come in handy. Uh, it's likely that today will be sort of a peak ferment day for that, uh, that, that free juice in there. And uh, I'm thinking, thinking that we may well either today or tomorrow drain that juice off and give that a give this a bit of a squash so that we've got an opportunity to extract the um, the colour and flavour from, from these berries on the whole bunches. Uh, one of the reasons I want to do that is just in case the tannin from these stalks becomes too much in this wine and we need to press it. Uh, I want to make sure that we potentially don't lose the potential uh, colour, flavour and, and yumminess from these berries. One of the other alternatives is we've got a little crusher and distemmer. We could actually run the pot through the crushing distemmer just to get rid of the stalks and break up these berries. So we've got a couple of options. Uh, we'll think about that a little bit and give you an update on what we decide to do next. Thanks for watching the Wine Decoded Bathtub Wine Making Project for Vintage 2016. The Shiraz is uh, heading in a good direction and we're looking forward to, to sharing it with you soon. Cheers.